I'm going to be showing you how to create a glowy aura shader that I needed to create for a card game I'm working on to show you when you can afford to pay for cards in your hand. It's a very nice four line solution, so let's jump straight into things. To start with, you're going to want to get a hold of a simple white to black gradient. The white is going to be where you want your aura to be. I found this one by googling white circle fade. Now we can go to the aura texture, add a material, and then add a shader material, and we're off to the races. We need to declare the shader type. This is going to be a canvas item because it's 2D. We're then going to declare a few parameters, and these are going to be accessible from the editor, and to do that we're going to use the uniform keyword. First of all, we're going to have a sampler 2D. This is going to contain our noise. And then we're going to add intensity, which is a float, and speed, which is a float. And intensity is going to control how on our effect is, and speed is going to be the rate at which the noise moves. Now we can quickly set up our noise. We want to find the N shader parameter, add a noise texture, and then add a noise variable. We want to read the data from our texture and noise to VEC4 variables that we're then going to manipulate. So we're going to save our texture to a VEC4 called TX, using the texture method and then texture in all caps and UV in all caps. And then we're going to want to get our noise and we're going to be scrolling this so that it moves over time. And how we're going to do that is we're going to read the texture in the same way. Instead of texture, we're going to take that N sampler 2D and we're going to minus the current time. That gets passed as a VEC2 by the shader because it's all clever and that will make it scroll up and to the left. However, that's going to be quite fast, so we're going to use our time parameter. I'm just going to divide this time by one plus the speed, and that will make it slower if we increase our speed variable. Now we can actually generate our aura. I'm going to get this by multiplying one channel from our texture by another channel from our noise, and then multiply that by our intensity. And then I'm going to clamp that between zero and one so we don't get too small or large values. After that, I'm going to square it using the power function, and what that will do is it will create more contrast in our glow, so that the lighter areas are lighter and the darker areas are darker. You can see it in action here, but our noise isn't quite right. It's a bit too noisy. So what we're going to do is we're going to decrease the resolution of our noise. I'm going to drop it to 64 width and height, and that will make the motion a lot lumpier. After that, the effect's pretty much complete. I can swap out the texture I use in my card game here, and I can swap in a card for that uh, Godot icon, and we end up with a card with a glowing aura around the edges, which is quite nice. One last thing I can show you is how to actually control this. You can access that intensity parameter from within an animation player, and we can have our animation player scale it from zero to something that looks good. For me, that's about three. And then I'm going to add a little script to listen for an input, and if our shader is off, it will turn it on, and it will play the animation, and if it's on, it will turn it off, and it will play the animation backwards. And here you can see that going, and that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope this has been helpful. If you want to see more about this card game project, feel free to follow my Twitter, there are fairly regular updates happening there. Cheers.